Hello, I'm Scott Weber. I'm a product manager here at Blue Marble Geographics. And in today's Ask the Experts, we're going to look at low distortion projections. So what are low distortion projections and why do we need them? Well, as we know, all map projections distort reality. And those distortions can be either linear or angular, basically distance or shape, or both. Low distortion projections, or LDPs as I'll call them, they minimize linear distortion, distortions in distance. Now, we use conformal projections to create LDPs, and that's because they won't be meaningful otherwise, because linear distortion is the same in all directions on a conformal projection from any map point on the map. Three conformal projections that are commonly used for LDPs are the transverse Mercator. Those are good for north-south orientations. Lambert conformal conic for east-west orientations. And the oblique Mercator, if the orientation is something other than those two. So what is linear distortion? Well, it's the difference between the distance on a map and the distance on a 3D surface. In the example here, we've got the ellipsoid surface, but we may want to use the topographic surface instead, and we certainly will. Distortion varies across the map, and it increases as the map surface departs from the 3D surface. So the goals in creating an LDP are to reduce the map to ground linear distance. So we want not the ellipsoid, but the ground, and we want to reduce it to within some predefined set threshold. And that might be over the entire map, or it might be just for some select map region, such as a valley or some population centers. And we want it to be software friendly, which really means we want it to be portable, so we can move it from one piece of software to another. So how do we construct a useful LDP? Well, we want to limit the domain of the projection to reduce that, that uh, separation between the map and the surface of interest. So generally LDPs are smaller than traditional maps. We wanna use well-known definitions such as well-known datums and projection methods, including those three that I mentioned previously. And we wanna simplify the parameter adjustments that we're making, uh, such as just looking at the projection scale factor and the projection axis. We'll see that in just a moment. So here are three typical placements of the mapping plane relative to the ellipsoid or the topographic surface. And the one we're interested here for LDPs is the non-intersecting projection and that is going to reduce the linear distortion at the ground. And what's important to note is that we can move among the traditional secant or tangent projections up to that non-intersecting projection simply by changing the scale factor of the projection. We don't need to introduce any height information or expanded ellipsoids and those kinds of things that have been used in the past. We can also deal with uh, a slope in the topographic surface. Um, and we can do that by tilting the mapping plane. And when we do that, there's not going to be a single ellipsoidal height that we can use to scale the map projection. So we can shift the projection axis away from what typically we would have that in the center of the area of interest, but we can shift it off to one side and that provides a, a tilt of the mapping plane. So let's look at an example. We have a traditional non-LDP state plane coordinate system of 83 Oregon South, that's the area in brown. And then we have the new low distortion projection and that's the state plane coordinate system of 2022 for Bend, Redmond, Prineville, shown in blue here. And indeed, you can see that the LDP is a smaller area 
than the older SPC83. Now, before we look at the results, uh, the units of linear distortion are often expressed in parts per million, and let's just put that in context. One part per million is one millimeter per kilometer of distortion. 189 parts per million is about one foot per mile, if you like to think in those units. And so on the left here, we have the traditional state plane coordinate system of 83 Oregon South, that bigger brown area that we saw earlier. And the area in green represents where the linear distortion is less than plus or minus 20 parts per million. Now on the right, we have the low distortion redesign projection for, that'll be coming out in 2022. And you can see that we've achieved a much larger area within the plus minus 20 parts per million of distortion. And you'll also notice that the central parallel is up towards the north of this region rather than right in the center. And that's to deal with the tilt of the slope. So how does that look in geographic calculator? Uh, this would be the definition of this coordinate system. And we received this from NGS in the form of a PRJ, and it can be imported and exported in well-known text formats. It uses a well-known datum, in this case, ITRF 2020. It will eventually be NatRef 2022 when that's released. It's using the Lambert tangent, which is the tangent form of the Lambert conformal conic. And then we have all the standard parameters, but with adjustments made to them to fit that um, low distortion region for Bend, Redmond, Prineville. The two highlighted ones are the ones that achieve the low distortion, the changing the uh, uh, projection axis and the scale factor of the projection. So that's it in a nutshell. And I'd like to thank Michael Dennis from NGS for his expertise and allowing me to share some of his graphics. And here are some references that you can look at for more information on low distortion projections. Once NGS releases the new state plane coordinate systems of 2022, they will be available in Geographic Calculator. For more information on the status of those, you can go to the NGS website shown on your screen. And for more information on Geographic Calculator, you can go to bluemarblegeo.com. Thanks for watching.